Hey geeks, do you like to catch bass offshore or out over deeper water? You can do it with a topwater. You just have to pick the right topwater for the right conditions. Let me show you how. That's right, geeks, Bass Geek here. We're gonna talk about topwaters out over like offshore spots, humps, points, even ledges. Trust me, you can do this. But it is key, man, it is super key, geeks, that you are using the correct top water for the conditions, the lake conditions that you're on. So let's jump right in. Let's talk about the baits, the colors, the conditions, and where you can find and catch these bass on these offshore spots. So let's talk about body styles first. That is the probably one of the biggest deals. And like I said, guys, you've got to learn that there's not a magic bait. Okay, yes, there might be one that in the right conditions on your lake and that one spot that you throw it at all the time, they bite it all the time. But knowing the right bait to throw in the right place in the right condition is gonna catch you a lot more than that one bait in that one spot or two spots that you always throw. There's no such thing as magic baits, guys. Some, it's just as one as good as the other. Others, it's, it's all about the style. And the first style I want to talk to you about, you guys see me throw these headings all the time. Now, this one is an Ima, and I want to talk to you about the nose. Now, most of the time, I'm going to tie a loop knot on these baits because I'm going to get a nice, wide walk out of them, almost a glide out of them, probably wider than a glide. And the reason why I do that is because I want them to move more side to side then horizontally toward me. I want them to stay in place because the key to calling those offshore bass up is to be able to keep it in a spot, move it less forward, more side to side to do that as much as you can. In clear water, when they're deeper, in you know slick, calm, clear water conditions, you cannot beat these because of the way they glide side to side with a loop knot. Now, again, I know a lot of you are gonna be like, you know, I wanna put a split ring on or I wanna put a clip on, won't that do the same thing? No, because it adds weight to it and it gets this nose and that tie in the water and it reduces the action and the glide of the bait. So that's where you wanna start with is these. These are some of my favorite. You've seen me catch a lot of fish and some really big fish on the headings. Uh, you know, the Ima is one of my favorites too. And you'll see, yes, it's a thinner, more subtle bait, but it also has that slick, normal nose. Now for me, I'm gonna throw these type of baits. This is a Domeki Rambler. I'm telling you, this is a great bait if you haven't seen it. If you haven't used it, it's a very wide bait. Uh, it's got a very unique body style to it. This is the Strike King Sexy Dog. But you can see they kind of both have the same style lip. This one might be a little more narrow, but they really work the same way. Now, there's no really no need in tying a loop knot on these because their action is gonna be very tight because this is going to add resistance. So these, I really do like to use in shallower water, a little bit of chop on the water, a little bit of dirtier water, okay? So if you're out there on that hump and that hump's like 10, 12 foot deep, or you're around a lot of small mouth, this is gonna be the deal for that, right? That's what I like. These are gonna throw a little bit more uh, water, they're gonna be a tighter action and they're gonna call bass up, but they're gonna to come toward you a lot faster than the other baits. So now let's talk about straight up popper style baits. Now, when I'm out there fishing over the ledges, I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite. Now this is a Berkeley Cane Walker. I love the shower blows. They come in a ton of different sizes. It's kind of a match the hatch. The great thing about top water is, is that you can always go a little bit bigger. And if you're trying to call them up, these are great baits. So you can walk a Rico, you can pop a popper, any type, whatever you want. Go with the bigger sizes, good long pauses between them. And of course, this little bait right here, the prank has got the lip so you can pop it and you can kinda pull it and get a little bit of swimming action under it. And that is another great little, because I'm telling you the swimming action on it 
calls them up as it dives under. But these are great, believe it or not. Get them out there, the bigger poppers, get them out there, work them over it. Again, I don't like a lot of chop on the water when I'm using these. Now this one is different though. This one, I mean, I'll fish this one with some pretty good chop. And what I love about this is that it they're really tail weighted. So they sit in the water and they don't really walk, but they just kind of, Mm, something like that but they really kind of set in the water and they just kind of barely move like this but they really if you hit them just right they'll pop and they really move side to side and that that heavier rear end a pencil popper is you know kind of where these started really stays in one spot i love these in the rain I love these when there's already a lot of noise and you really need to keep this over the bass's head and, and it doesn't matter how deep they are. But I love these when they're a little bit of noise to a lot of noise. These baits will call them up and they will crush them. I mean, they will crush these baits. So if there's a lot of boat traffic, if there's a lot of wake of any sort that you go to, the Shower Blow by Evergreen, or the, if you wanna come out a little bit cheaper, I'm telling you these Berkeley Cane Walkers are money. Now let's talk about color. So this is bone. Anytime I go anywhere new, the first thing I'm gonna pick up is bone. Why? Because it's a white belly. What does not have a white belly of some sort? White, silver, something. It can be shad, it can be a rat swimming through the water, it can be anything. What in nature doesn't have a white belly? Bone is, is just my go-to. If I go to a lake and I don't know what they're feeding on, that right there is always a pretty good guess. If I had to pick a condition for bone, I'm gonna say a little bit of overcast, you know, to a bluebird, probably not exactly ultra clear water. And when I say ultra clear, I mean five foot or more like today. I mean, I'd easily say we're seeing 8, 10, 12 feet. I'm not saying a bone won't work. Listen, there's always exceptions to the rule. Bone is definitely a go-to anytime, anywhere I go. It's probably what I start with. Now, we're going to talk about translucence. Now, this bait don't really look translucent, I know, but trust me, this bait is incredibly translucent. Something that's clear, the herringbone spook junior that I have, but this is one of my favorites to start with right here. And that's gonna be slick calm, clear conditions, or even bluebird skies to clear water, right? Maybe even just a little bit of chop, but not a lot of chop. I'm going to something translucent. Black, when I'm around smallmouth. <laughs> that's pretty much my favorite time to throw any sort of black top water. They hate it, I don't understand why. 90% of the places, they'll just eat a black top water. Any other time, low light conditions. It's a good silhouette against a really overcast sky, dirtier water. It's gonna stand out so much better than most other colors. First thing in the morning, great color to throw. Chrome, for me, chrome is gonna be bluebird skies with wind. It just creates a lot of flash, bluebird sky, high sun, some great flash. I don't like to use it on cloudy days because it's not gonna get as much reflection, but on those bluebird skies and you got a nice chop to it, man, that chop really breaks that flash up. And so it just draws attention. You get a ton of flash, but when you got a little bit of chop on the water, it still breaks it up enough to where the fish just have to put their face on it to figure out what it is. All right, so let's talk about retrieves for most of these baits when you're out there. And it really depends on the level of the bass. So a lot of times when we're talking about smallmouth, if they're out there suspended, they like to move. I like to make sure I'm moving the bait quickly. So if we're talking about smallmouth and they're out there, I mean, smallmouth can be as deep as 20 feet and you can still walk it over their heads and they're gonna fire up there and get it, it's crazy. But for the most part with a smallmouth, I like a very quick retrieve with a stop and then a, a, another quick retrieve. Almost as soon as you start back, a lot of times they'll hit it. Large mouth, generally, I want something that is going to stay in place and really just stay over their head. I tell people all the time, think about small mouth and large mouth 
as cats versus dogs, right? Or spots for that matter. Uh, or fat guys versus skinny guys, right? When I'm out there or when I'm fishing for a largemouth, they're fat, they're slow. And I know I'm fat and slow on it. So I, I you know, I, I'm not tossing no shade. I, I'm t just talking about my people. When that thing comes over the head, if it goes over too fast, then you can watch it. You can see them. You know, I've seen them on live scope now, but they'll come up and if it goes over their head too fast and they're down 15 feet, 20 feet, 10 feet, they just kind of start up and they'll be like, hey, I ain't chasing that. Smallmouth, I mean, they're like, I'm killing it. You dying. Uh, and that's just smallmouth and spots for you. They, if they want it, they, they gonna get it. They gonna get it. That's the deal right there's the two retrieves, you know, a good steady go, a stop and go. Slow it down if there's large mouth and if they're deeper than say, you know, if they're at that 10 foot or deeper, suspended. All right guys, so I've got this kind of color coded here. This is a good spot when I talk about offshore humps that you can really look at. You know, this is kind of main lake right here. You got a hump, you got a hump, you got a saddle, you know, it's really a point that comes out and you got a, your creek channel that runs around it, your river channel that runs out here. But that's a great spot. Now, something else, guys, is a little spot like this. Now, you got a little creek going back up in there, but a lot of times these little spots right around channel swings where it runs up close to the bank, these little areas right here, this little area, a lot of times it'll clean that out and it'll create a hard bottom right there. And those bass will set up on you know rock or stumps or anything that might be there waiting for the current to run that uh, bait fish or food source right down to them. Like I said, it normally clears it off. That's another great place to sit and look. And a lot of times that's why you'll see me, I'll be set up with the back of the boat against the bank and casting out toward the deeper water. This is another great place, guys. You've got two really good spots right here. Now, this is your traditional ledge right here. You see, man, you got 15 feet. It drops off to 40 in the creek channel. You got a nice little creek channel right there, right up in here. If they're suspended, right here, if they're suspended, you come all the way down to right here. You got a nice little point. If they're set up anywhere in here, suspended take that top water bait and work over top of them i'm telling you i know on kentucky lake a few years ago one of the guys took a shower blow he was fishing over those some offshore bass racked it up won the tournament uh it kind of blew everybody away kind of put evergreen really and truly on the map and the shower blows on the map again uh i think it's even why berkeley come out with the cane walker man it's something that i love to do i got a ton of videos on it where I set out over deeper water and I sit there and call them up. Don't discount top water, man. Top water is one of my favorite things to do. And if you don't love top water, all I know is you're already six foot under. It's all I know to tell you because if you don't love a top water bite, you are quite possibly dead. Better go have somebody check. As always, geeks, you know, questions, comments in the comment section below. If you guys got questions about top water over deep water like this, let me know. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell. Guys, 100% Watch Squad, you guys are helping me live my dream. So, you know, and it's free, man. All you got to do is watch 100% of the videos 100% of the time. And as always, you geeks, you geek rock. <laughs>